We're given a Taylor series, though it is not about x equals 0, which would make it also a Maclaurin series. And we're asked to find a radius of convergence. We're asked to be able to differentiate the Taylor series, both for a specific number of terms as well as for the general term. And then this particular Taylor series turns out to be geometric namely the one that based on the derivative and therefore we're asked to determine that uh, function f prime and then integrate that so there's quite a bit going on here um, and these are some of the formulas and uh, procedures that we need to be successful with this problem so with that said let's just go right ahead so first up is the need to find the radius of convergence. Well, uh, to find radius of convergence, we use the a limit ratio test. Radius of convergence. That's typically just called the ratio test, so I'll put limit in parentheses. Okay, and what we do is we take the limit as n goes to infinity of two successive terms uh, written in terms of n. So, let's take the term that would follow this general term. So that's going to be negative 1 to the n plus 1 plus 1, which is n plus 2. 2 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 times x minus 1 to the n plus 1. This is the n plus first term. We're going to divide that by the so-called nth term, but we'll do that by multiplying by its reciprocal, just to keep the calculation simpler. And so that's going to put n on top and all of the other terms that are currently in the numerator in the denominator. So that's negative 1 n plus 1 that's 2 to the n that's x minus 1 uh, the quantity to the n. Before we take the limit it's often the case that or typically the case that uh, quite a few terms cancel so this term cancels all but one power of this term in the numerator uh, this term cancels all but one power of this term in the numerator. This term cancels all but one, let's see, yes, all but one power of this term in the numerator. And so, that's going to equal the limit as n tends to infinity of negative 1 times 2 times x minus 1 times n over n plus 1. So these, uh, these terms, the one in the numerator and the other in the denominator, are really the only two that um, have a value whose limit needs to be evaluated as n goes to infinity. And that's just going to be 1. So this is our common ratio in the limit that n goes to infinity, and it's that that we need to interpose between negative 1 and 1. What is that? Let's write this out. Negative 2x plus 2. Okay, now basically we're now solving for x. So I'll subtract 2 from both sides. I get negative 3 and negative 1. Let's do this. Let's just double check that we haven't made a mistake. This is a great place to make mistakes, or <laughs> this is a typical place to make mistakes. Okay, now we'll divide both si uh, the entire expression by negative 2. It reverses the signs, and we'll get uh, 1 half less than x less than... Uh, three halves. 
So um, the distance between here, so the radius is radius of convergence, yeah, is defined as capital R up above, so I don't need to further define it. And so that's just going to be uh, 3 halves minus 1 half, the distance between these two endpoints, divided by 2. And that's going to equal 1 half. Okay, that's the radius of convergence. So now we move on to part B. And this is um, a little bit to think about. We're going to be uh, finding f prime. The, the Taylor series they've given us is f. We want to find f prime also about x equals 1. Good thing, because that's the only place where we could find it in a term-by-term -term sense. And so we're going to simply differentiate term by term. We're going to do that for the first three non-zero terms and then for the general term. So the first thing we're going to do is just write out the non-zero, the first three or four non-zero terms of f and then differentiate them term by term. Um, we first... Um, write out the first few terms of f. Of f, f equals, all right, what would the first term be? I put a 1 in here, I get negative 1 squared. That's positive. 2 to the 1 over 1 is 2. x minus 1 to the 1 is x minus 1. That's my first term. Now, what's next? I plug in 2 for n in all of these locations. Now this is an odd power of negative 1, so that's going to be a negative term. 2 to the n is 2 squared over 2, and x minus 1, the quantity squared. Of course, 2 squared over 2, we could simplify down to 2. Okay, next term, uh, n equals 3. This is an even power of negative 1, so that's going to be plus. Now we have 2 cubed over 3. We're going to leave that just like it is. There's no simplifying to be done there. And then we have x minus 1, the quantity cubed. Now, do we need another term? It would probably be negative. But, in fact, we don't need another term because we're trying to find the first three non-zero terms of the derivative. And you can see that differentiating each of these terms in succession will give us non-zero values. So that's all we need uh, there. You know, I just realized this is kind of confusing. The first few terms of f. That's what we're finding. Okay, so... Let's uh, segment this. So this is b continued. I guess I should have written. Yeah, I did. OK, so b continued. OK, now we're going to differentiate term by term. And what do we get when we take the derivative of this, we're just going to get f prime is a 2. What's the derivative of 2x minus 1 squared? That's going to be minus 4x minus 1. Again, just the power rule with a trivial application of the chain rule. And the next term is going to be plus. We're going to bring down a 3. It's going to cancel this 3. And so we just have plus 8x minus 1 squared. And that next term would be dot, dot, dot. But these are the first three terms. So let's be clear that we claim to have found them. These are the first three non-zero terms. of f prime. What about the general term? Well, in fact, this intimidates a lot of students, but there really is no need. And here's the key. You see all these parameters in, but they are not the variable that we're differentiating with respect to. So everything here 
is just, here I may as well just circle it in, all of this is just one big constant. It doesn't change at all when I differentiate this term with respect to x. Okay, So that makes things a lot easier. So let's say uh, differentiating the general term of f gives us the general term of f prime. And what's it going to be? It's going to be negative 1 to the n plus 1, 2 to the n over n. Again, we haven't done anything. We've just moved the constant out front. This is where the only differentiation action is, so to speak. And for that, we use the power rule, n times x minus 1 to the n minus 1. Yes, there's the chain rule really implicit here because we'd have to multiply by the derivative of this, but it's just 1. So these n's cancel, and that's the general term. That's the general term of f prime. We did it. Part C. Let's make sure we've answered everything they asked for. Yep, we did. Now, they claim that and who are we to doubt them that uh, the uh, Taylor series expansion of f prime is in fact a geometric series, okay? And they want us to know what that converges to, that f prime function converges to using what we know about um, what an infinite geometric series converges to. So we're gonna use that knowledge, okay? Um, an infinite geometric series converge you know, an infinite geometric series has the form geometric power series has the um, form a over 1 minus r, some function of x, where a is the initial term, and r of x is the uh, ratio between successive terms. Excuse me. So we can find A just by evaluating this for n equals 1. That's going to be negative 1 squared, a 1, 2 to the 1, a 2, and x minus 1 for 1 minus 1 is 0 up in the exponent, so this is just a 1. So it's really just uh, 2. Now, comparing successive terms, r of x is that ratio of successive terms. So we're just going to take this negative 1 to the n plus 1, 2 to the n, x minus 1 to the n minus 1, our general term. We're going to compare the n plus 1 term, or rather the next term here. I guess you could quibble about whether we could call it the n plus 1 term, given the power of x minus 1. But we're going to take the next term and divide it by this term. So what have we got? We've got negative 1 to the n plus 2, 2, uh, 2 to the n plus 1 x minus 1 to the n, and we're going to divide it by, ordinarily I'd multiply by the reciprocal, but there's only a, a numerator in this expression. Negative 1 to the n plus 1, 
uh, 2 to the n and x minus 1 to the n minus 1. So what cancels? All the powers of the numerator there are canceled by that, all except for negative 1. All the powers but 1 of this are canceled by that, leaving just a 2. And all the powers of this but 1 are canceled by this. So r of x equals a negative 2 times x minus 1, which I'm going to change to negative 2x plus 2. So, so therefore, f prime of x over the interval of convergence, but they already talked about that, so we don't need to restate that. f prime of x equals 2 over uh, 1 minus negative 2x plus 2. And what's that? That's 2 over, um, was that 2x? That's um, 2x minus 1. Therefore, f of x equals, we know how to integrate this, this is 2 over uh, let's just write it out 2 over 2x minus 1 dx I'm going to need a little room here thank you okay and so f of x equals how do we integrate this? The 2 comes out front. This is ln of the absolute value of 2x minus 1. But it was actually a u substitution, so it's going to introduce a divide by 2. And so those 2s are going to cancel. And then plus some c. Wow, do we have to leave it like that with the plus c? In fact, we do not have to leave it like that with the plus c because we do have an initial condition, if you will. Namely, we know that when x equals 1, this term, I'm, I'm already, I'm all the way back to the original function. When x equals 1, and that is certainly within our uh, interval of convergence, when x equals 1, this is... Uh, 1, or I'm sorry, this is uh, 0, right? And 0 to the 1 power is 0. And so the very first term is 0, and in fact all the successive terms are going to be 0, 0 to any power, any finite power is 0. And so f of 1 equals 0. Okay. However, from original series, again, I'm sorry to cut it so close. We have that f of 1 equals 0. And so we can use that to solve for the initial condition. And so we get f of x equals ln of 2x minus 1. Because if I put in uh, the 1 here for x, I get uh, 2 minus 1. The ln of 1 is 0. And I just said that 1 comma 0 is an initial condition. So I used that initial condition to find the answer. It's a lot of thinking, a lot of writing. But uh, like banging your head against the wall, it sure feels good when you're done.